I've been doing this a long time. I've been in this business over 20 years. Not many things shock me anymore. But it bound for glory when the mask came off. And I found out, and Hulk found out, and Sting found out, and the whole world found out that my brother Devon was involved with the aces and eights. I was totally shocked. Last week, Devon came out here and he gave some bull crap excuse as to why he did what he did. He really said a bunch of nothing. So what I want right now, Devon, aces and eights, I know you're around somewhere. Devon, my brother, face to face, man to man, I wanna know why you did what you did. You wanna know why? Is that what you wanna know? I don't owe you an explanation. As a matter of fact, you and I are no longer a team. You and I are no longer family. You and I are nothing. You understand me? You did what you did two years ago, and I did what I did. Enough said. This has nothing to do with you. Absolutely nothing. This whole thing has to do with Hogan. Hogan came out here and said, oh, well, I want Devon back. Oh, Devon is such a, uh, he's a great wrestler. He's a fighting champion. Hogan never called me. Hogan never texted me. And that little crap he put on his Twitter about, oh, I care more about Devon than anything. I want him back. You know what Hogan did? Him, Dixie, and TNA, they sat behind that desk and they did nothing. When I was down and out, the brotherhood right here, aces and eights, they were the ones that had my back. They were the ones that picked me up. TNA and Hogan did nothing. Mark my words, this doesn't end here. I promise you, when everything is said and done, we will take out each and every one of the people that's done us wrong, one by one. So why don't you go home, forget what happened, and leave it be. It's over, it's done. This is over when I tell you it's over. And as far as what I did to you two years ago, you know exactly why I did it. It's between me and you, Devon. This is about me. You talking about Hogan and hiding behind these guys? You're a lying sack of crap and you know it. On the night that we were supposed to retire, we faced the Motor City Machine Guns. We should have retired as the World Tag Team Champions. We hit our finish. We hit the 3D. You covered Chris Saban and he kicked out. Nobody has ever kicked out of our finishing move. Nobody. In 15 years, in ECW, in WWE, in WCW, in Japan, not one single wrestler ever kicked out of our finish. But they kicked out on you. And here's the part about it that nobody knows, Devon, that you never thought that I would tell the world. When we sat in that locker room and I had my head in the ground because I felt like crap. I thought we let each other down. I thought we let them down. Do you remember what you said to me? Did you remember? Because it's emblazoned in my head. I will never forget what you said. You said, Bubba, what the hell's the big deal? What are you so worried about? We're rich. Screw the fans. I can't deny it because it's true. Screw them idiots. I can give a damn about them and those people at home. You know something? We are doing far too much talking here. Me and you were never much on talking. We were all about fighting. Damn right we so were. So why don't you do this? Why don't you get rid of the guys that you're hiding behind and me and you fight right now? Oh, you want me right now? Right now? Tell them you to leave. Me. Leave the ring. Get rid of them. Me and you, I want to kick your ass so 
freaking bad. I can taste it. Let's do it. I'm down. No. You see, it's not on your time. It's on my time. So why don't you get your head out of your and stop thinking that the world revolves around you. As far as I'm concerned, I will let you know when the time is right. For now, I'm going home. You know something? This is so typical of you. Because all your career, you've been nothing but a coward. You hid behind me. You had no bull then, and you have no bull now. Do yourself a favor. Next Thursday night is open fight night. I ain't gotta wait. I don't gotta think about it. I'm challenging you. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. Sit down, shut up, and listen up. What a difference a couple of years makes. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. In probably the longest talking segment involving the former Team 3D and former Dudleys, probably in their careers. That's the longest that they've gone. And that had to be edited a little bit too. Go figure. But uh, what a difference a couple of years makes. You would have thought a couple of years ago that Bully Ray or Bubba back then, or Brother Ray, whatever, you know, pick your name basically, uh, he would have been the uh, anti-fan one and Devon would have been the more fan-friendly one. It's amazing what time does. Oh, wow. Anyway, that's, uh, that's leading to this Thursday's impact. Will Devon answer the challenge, even though he's supposed to under the rules of open fight night? And now that they're in the fold in TNA after winning it bound for glory, I guess that means we're going to see Bully Ray and Devon this Thursday on Impact. Anyway, we got a full board, so let's go ahead and get through them. Ron's been hanging patiently. Ron, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Good afternoon, Ron. What's going on? Uh, I just want to comment about a few things. Uh, one, I want to comment, uh, you know, when AJ, when you spoke with AJ, she didn't give you an inkling that she was going to do this, was she? No, uh, when, when she had, I mean, when she was on, I didn't exactly directly ask any questions regarding it, but, I mean, I did mention that as Vince was coming down, I mean, she said she was, uh, she was extremely nervous because she, like a lot of people, thought she was going to be fired at that point. So did she perhaps see the writing on the wall? I'd say so. I mean, the fact that it didn't happen there, I mean, would she have been able to predict that it would have happened a couple weeks later? Who knows? But I, I think because there was so much scrutiny involved, the, the handwriting's kind of there. I mean, not not to use a, a football comparison, but kind of like uh, with, with Andy Reid and the, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. The writing's on the wall that uh, he's on his way out uh, if he doesn't start turning around and winning a little bit soon. I mean, just as an example. Well, I'm not saying that she fraternized with a superstar. Okay, all right. John Cena's name was mentioned, uh, but Kane's name wasn't mentioned. Daniel Bryan's name wasn't mentioned. And then you look at Vicky Guerrero, who is the what? Imagine, what is it? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, well, I mean, well, yeah, she's. She, yeah, she, she she's. She fraternized with uh, Edge. She did, and she married Edge. I mean, I don't think that WWE is going to play in the fight. Either. It's not, it's like not, not favorite to them. Bring it back, Vicky Guerrero in a, a high position like this. Like they're saying, Rick Flair is having the raw Monday area. And uh, then Rick Flair is going to take over for Vicky's role and Dolph Ziggler's career. And um, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I don't want this. Well, the, the, the sentiment seems to be... Uh uh, pretty much across the board that Vicky uh, isn't exactly the best choice. And I think it's a panic move for somebody who garners a lot of heat. Thanks uh, so much for the call. we got to get rolling a little bit here because, uh, yeah, it's an interesting interesting week to say the least. And uh, we're going to try to keep it going as best we can here. Bear with me. I'm uh, kind of operating it all here. I'm uh, running the dials. I'm uh, answering the phones. I'm doing it all while Bill Melody, uh, he, is, uh, he is not here today. So I'm Kind of, kind of a one-man band here. Uh, not to, not to take anything away from Heath Slater. Anyway, let's get to. Uh, oh, here's a local guy, Pool Shark. I know I've talked with him on a couple of occasions. He's uh, called into the program, met him at a couple of local shows. Pool Shark, welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you so much. I just want to announce the DWF Locos next event 
after we just had a big huge event about two weeks ago, the Halloween Bash. Our next one's Thanksgiving weekend, November 24th, and the main event's going to be a TLC match for the Cruiserweight Championship. A cruiserweight's getting the top spot on the card. Like it. Um, we actually kept the tag, the tag team. None of the, the um, titles changed hands, especially my tag team champs did not lose their belts after defending their titles for the first time at the last show. We don't even know who we're going to be defending the, this next show. So it should be an interesting show, the next one. All right, that's coming up no, November 24th. That's, what, four weeks away? Yes. I will have more info in the upcoming weeks. All right. Sounds good. Look, Looking forward to it. Thanks. All so, right. Thank uh, you. No problem. Thanks so much for chiming in. Always uh, appreciate, of course, Pool Shark running things over at the DWF Loco, making their way now over to uh, Feasterville. They were over in uh, over in Pensauk in New Jersey for a little while. Uh, good to see that they're uh, a little bit more local for a lot of our uh, a lot of our listening fan base here. All right. Let's uh, let's. All right, we'll get to we'll get to Steve on the other side. I want to make sure he gets the full amount of time. I had uh, teased it a little bit earlier, and uh, this is going to lead to a theme that we're going to discuss on next week's program. Uh, your favorite all time wrestling bloopers, and uh, <laughs> TNA certainly contributed one. Uh, thankfully, this clip's only uh, about a little over a minute and a half long. But you'll notice at the end of the clip, uh, someone didn't do the best job of editing. And I know I'm not exactly one to talk, as I know some of my editing jobs haven't exactly been uh, top quality. But this, this, is, this is kind of editing 101, uh, leaving something in that uh, shouldn't have been. So here it is from Impact, a little bit of an altercation in the hallway between Austin Aries and Ken Anderson after Ken Anderson rejected as one of the four vying for the title shot at Championship Thursday. I don't know what you want. Week after week, we come in here and have these deliberations. Do you want me to grovel at your feet? You don't know what I want. Well, you know what? You're making this real easy for me because the fire that everybody else has in here, you don't have it. So you're the one that's eliminated tonight. My brother, first elimination. You made it easy on me. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, yeah, that sucks, right? Hulk Hogan telling you you're not good enough to get a World Heavyweight title shot. Don't eat enough vitamins, say enough prayers, didn't use enough brothers, brother. I know how it is. We you see, it came with me. That, that never happened because when I'm the World Heavyweight Champion, I'm just going to give you a title shot. Just I give one to you. Yeah, thanks. I don't need handouts. You don't need handouts. You don't need handouts. Well, that's kind of what it'd be, you know, giving you a title shot. It'd be handout for me because... You'd be really easy to beat because, well, I'm, I'm a better wrestler than you and oh. I see a better dresser than you. And I would even say I'm a bigger <laughs> than you, Ken. Oh, you're a bigger <laughs> than me, huh? Yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh. Okay, whoops, that's uh, one of the directors, uh, presumed to be Jason Hervey in the background uh, filming that, and they didn't quite edit the uh, end of the scene the way that they uh, they wanted to with one of those pre-recorded bits. Uh, a fun little blooper, and uh, that'll lead to the main focal point of next week, along with the Hell in a Cell c- coverage and review and whatnot. What's your favorite wrestling blooper of all time? I've already got a few running through my head. I've already been getting some audio clips together. We'll be playing some of those in next week's program. Should certainly be a fun one, to say the least. Anyway, we'll take care of our second time out. We'll get to Steve on the other side. I've got some news and notes, and, of course, my prediction's certain to go wrong for Hell in a Cell tomorrow night. And we got time for you as well. 215-949-3232 or toll free at 888-922-2149. Those are the ways to reach us. We've also got the Facebook fan page. Just look for WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. And if you missed any of the shows, check them out on YouTube. Just go to the search engine. Look for WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly. 
And I believe you can also look it up either by Pro Wrestling Weekly or by my name. I believe it's now attached. So just look up Ferran Derry, F-E-A-R-O-N-D-E-R-R-Y, and you can find it right there on YouTube. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com.